so last lecture we were discussing the capacitors and that was the starting point of the ac circuits so uh, capacitors were the starting point of the ac uh, circuits and now today uh, today's lecture we are going to focus on inductors fundamentals now again like a capacitor uh, inductor is also a passive element however it is designed to store energy in the magnetic field the capacitor stored energy in the electric field and the inductor stores energy in the magnetic field but both are passive devices inductors you will find numerous applications in the field of electronics and power systems so just like you can see the inductors in power supplies transformers radios tvs radars and electric motors so numerous applications are there for the inductors any conductor of electric current which is carrying electric current has inductive property and may be regarded as an inductor so those uh, conductor which is carrying an electric current and has inductive property that will regard as the inductor but in order to enhance the inductive effect a practical inductor is usually formed into a cylindrical coil so there has to be in the form of a coil and it will be turned many number of turns will be there for the coil and the coil will be conducting in nature so that will have an inductive effect generally an inductor is constructed by coiling a wire around some type of form this form is known as the core so you know that the core is made up of magnetic material having high permeability so those magnetic uh, materials whose permeability is high they are formed as a core now the core is laminated so that the losses is reduced whereas the inductor is the coil which is responsible for the production of the flux in the core so when you pass any current through the coil from the supply that will create a magnetic field or the flux this magnetic field or flux will be uh, is will be will lie in the core and it will link to the core as well as the coil so we will see in transformer when we will we will discuss the basic of the transformer how the inductors are responsible for the production of the flux in the core and how this flux is linking to the coil uh, in order to produce the emf so here is just few pics which will show you how the inductors are formed so you can see we have a core material so core materials are those materials whose permeability is high so if the permeability is high then only the flux will be established now the inductors are in the form of a coil and it is number of turns which is owned on the core material so the length is one of the physical dimension of the coil number of turns is another property and the cross sectional area is for the core material so two examples let us see one is known as the toroidal inductor where you can see this is the core material and you have the coils which is connected in the core and you can give a supply to the coil similarly this is a transformer so in transformer you can see that the coil is owned on the former which is known as the core the core is laminated the laminated why because to reduce the losses the eddy current loss will be minimized when you will laminate the core so on laminating the core the losses is minimized and when we give ac supply to the coil then in that case there is a flux established in the core this flux linked to the coil also and if you have two coils so coil number 1 and coil number 2 which is linked with a common magnetic core then due to faraday's law of electromagnetic induction what will happen that if you have given a voltage v here then there will be an induced emf e on the secondary coil so this is the first coil and this is the second coil so first coil is known as the primary coil and second coil is known as the secondary coil both the coils are linked with the help of a same magnetic core so same flux is linking both the coils hence if you supply a voltage v to one of the coil 
then there will be an induced EMF in the second coil. This is known as Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, which is the basic governing principle for the transformer. So when we will study the transformer, we will see this principle in detail. However, at present this topic is concentrating on the inductors. So inductor is very important for numerous applications you have seen. Now the inductance of an inductor depends on the physical dimension and construction. So you have seen that physical dimensions are there which is governed by the length, area of the cross section and the number of turns, right? And it depends upon the construction. So there are numerous formulas which are used for calculating the inductance of inductor for different shapes. So when the shape of the coil is changed, then the inductance will also change. And you can get those formulas from the electromagnetic theory book and can be found in standard electrical engineering handbook. So ready-made formulas are already available for the different inductors. For example, if we take an inductor in the form of a solenoid, then the value of L that is the inductance is given by N square mu A by L where n is the number of turns, l is the length of the winding or the coil, a is the cross-sectional area and mu is the permeability of the core. You know that mu is equal to mu naught into mu r, where mu naught is the permeability of free space or the vacuum and mu r is the relative permeability of the core material. So relative permeability of the core material. Now we can determine the inductance with their known physical dimension or the construction of the materials. Now from this equation we can see that inductance can be increased. So in order to increase the inductance what we have to do? We have to increase the number of turns in the coil. So you increase the value of n then inductance will increase or you use a higher permeability material. So once the material is better, good, then the inductance is also good enough. Or increasing the cross-sectional area. You increase the cross-sectional area of the core, inductance will increase and inversely proportional to the length. So you have to reduce the length of the coil. So all these factors will be governing factor to control the value of the inductance of the inductor. Now when the shape of the inductors change, the formula also changes. Now we'll discuss the principle of the inductor. So when there is a time rate of change of current or the current is changing with respect to time, if its value changes then what happens is that the resultant flux also changes. Means with the change in the current, there is a change in the flux. Now, according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, time varying magnetic flux, what is the meaning time varying magnetic flux? That is d phi by dt. So d phi by dt, when there is a linking with a coil, now you have a coil and the flux in that coil is basically changed by d phi by dt, that will induce a voltage across the coil. So we can see a voltage which is induced across the coil. Now the flux is changed because of the change of the current. So when there is a change of the current di by dt, there is a change of the flux d phi by dt and due to Faraday's law there is an induced EMF uh, or the voltage across the coil. Now if the inductor is ideal, then the voltage is proportional to the time rate of change of the current. So voltage will be proportional to the time rate of change of the current di by dt for an ideal inductor. Now the polarity of the voltage is such as to oppose the change in the current. This principle is known as the Lenz law. So the direction of the induced EMF or the voltage is being given by the Lenz law which states that the polarity of the voltage is to oppose the change in the current because the current is the cause. So current is the cause and flux is the effect. So the polarity of the voltage will be opposed by the change in the current which is in accordance with the Lenz law. 
Now the constant of proportionality is known as the inductance. So voltage is directly proportional to the rate of change of the current di by dt. Now if I want to equate it, then the constant of proportionality will be is known as the inductance L. So here we have a inductor and the current is flown, flown such as this terminal is positive and this terminal is ne negative. Always we use passive sign convention. So in accordance with passive sign convention, the current is entering the positive terminal and the current is leaving the negative terminal. Then we will have a voltage V of T which is uh, the voltage across the inductor for the current I of T which is flowing through the inductor. Now the equation in accordance with the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, we have the voltage which is L di by dt. Now L being the constant of proportionality which is known as the inductance. So inductance is that constant of proportionality which is equating the voltage as the time rate of change of the current. Now the inductor unit is Henry which is equivalent to volt second per ampere. So you can find the unit of inductance L is equal to V into T by current from this equation. So you can do that uh, to find the uh, unit of the inductance. So inductance unit is in Henry. We can write that one volt second by ampere. This is the unit of inductance. However, in practical cases, Henry is a very big unit. We do not use Henry as a big unit. We use micro Henry to milli Henry. If you remember when we described the capacitor, we were discussing the capacitor, I told you that farad is a very big unit. We usually go for nanofarad, microfarad or millifarad like that. Even we go for nanofarad and microfarad only. Here we go for micro Henry to milli Henry range only for a commercial inductor. Now there are different symbols which are used to represent different type of inductor. So this is the basic symbol for an inductor and this is for the ideal inductor. Remember this symbol is for ideal inductor. Ideal inductor is the one which is not having any losses and it is in accordance with passive sign convention. We have positive here, negative here for the current entering. So this is the representative of air core inductor. I told you that there will be a uh, core which is the magnetic material having a good amount of permeability. So permeability will be good and there will be a coil which is cone. So this is given by the inductance L. Now the coil if it is owned on the air former it means that the magnetic material here is air. There is no magnetic material, it is in air. So you will have a symbol like this. If it is owned on iron core, you will be having two lines which represent the core material. So when we have two coils, suppose this is a coil number one, which is the primary coil. And this is coil number two, which is the secondary coil. Then between it is linked with a iron. So we give two lines. Then it represents that it is a iron core inductor. If the core is variable, then it is known as variable iron core. So two lines will be there and one arrow will be there. That is known as variable iron core. We use this symbol or this symbol. This is not much use. So we generally discuss these two symbols only. So if these two lines are not there, it means it is a air core inductor. Now, if we draw a graph between voltage on the y axis, and time rate of change of the current di by dt on the x-axis, then we will get the slope, which is basically the inductance as a straight line and uniform linear, okay? So this is the voltage current relationship of an inductor. Now, we have discussed the fluid flow analogy in terms of capacitor. Now, let us discuss the fluid flow analogy in inductor. The fluid flow analogy for inductance is the initia of the fluid which is flowing through a frictionless pipe of constant diameter. So you have a pipe 
Now this is the cross sectional area of the pipe which is having a constant diameter. So this diameter is constant. Now this is frictionless pipe means there will be no losses when the water will be uh, flowing through the pipe or the fluid will be flowing through the uh, pipe, inertia of the fluid. The pressure differential between the ends of the pipe, so two ends of the pipe is there. So here you have the inlet pressure, this is PI, this is P out. So the pressure difference between the ends of the pipe is analogous to the voltage. So we can see here, this is the voltage input and this is the voltage output. The potential difference is V. Here the pressure difference is P we can take. The flow rate or velocity is analogous to the current. So the velocity by which the fluid is flowing inside the pipe is the current which is flowing through the inductor. So this is the analogy between the pressure with the voltage, means pressure difference with the voltage and the flow rate or the velocity in analogous to current. Thus, the acceleration of the fluid, so acceleration of the fluid is analogous to the rate of change of the current. So when we say, because every time in inductance we will require di by dt, so this is analogous to the acceleration of the fluid inside the pipe. The a pressure differential exists between the ends of the pipe only when the flow rate is increasing or decreasing. It means that if the fluid which is flowing inside the pipe, either it is increasing velocity or decreasing velocity, then only the pressure will develop or the potential will be developed in the inductor. That is the differential pressure, which is the voltage. One place where the inertia of the flowing fluid is encountered is when a valve closes suddenly or cutting of the flow. Means if there is a valve which is present in the pipe and it is cutting the flow or stopping encountered it, then the inertia of the flowing fluid changes. Now, having understood the basic concept of inductance, we will go into the electrical term where we will find what is the current in terms of the voltage for an inductor. Now considering that we know the initial current, so we have an inductor, so the current which is flowing through the inductor at the initial condition T0, at the initial condition T0, we know and the voltage V of T across an inductance also at the initial condition we know. Then suppose that we need to compute the current for T greater than T0 time. So we will want to calculate the current when for a time T which is much greater than T0. Then the equation we will write. So we know the voltage equation which is L di by dt. We will start our discussion from here. Now this equation will give us the value of di. So we will take 1 by L Vt of dt. So from the first equation we have got the second equation to find the differential amount of the current. Now if we integrate, now you integrate the equation 2 from the initial current for value T0 to I of T. So I of T0 is the initial current. I of T is the current at a particular time T. Then 1 by L will come outside the integral because it is a constant of proportionality. Now you integrate the voltage for the same time T0 to T. So the final equation of the current you will be getting I of T is equal to 1 by L integral V of dt. So this is the voltage. So from the voltage we are basically getting the amount of current. So the current I of T general uh, condition is 1 by L integral V dt Con considering that I T0 is equal to 0 means the initial current in the inductor is 0. We have not taken any charge inductor so there is no uh, inductor is not having initial current then the basic equation of the current is 1 by L integral V dt. Voltage is L di by dt. So these two fundamental equations we will be using always uh, to solve any numerical. 
So as long as the voltage is finite, we can see that this voltage V of T, as long as it is finite, the current can change only by an incremental amount in a time increment. That is, it should be continuous. So the current will be continuous and no instantaneous jump in value in discontinuities. So we have seen the graph where we have done voltage with respect to di by dt. So the inductance is basically a curve of the slope of the line. Similarly, if we draw the current voltage relationship between the inductor, then the current is continuous. There is no discontinuity of the current for the voltage to be finite in the inductor. Now we'll discuss the stored energy. So similar to the discussion that we have done in capacitor, we will do the derivation from the power equation. So this is the power equation. We know that power is the product of voltage into current and all are time dependent quantity. Now the voltage equation we can substitute. We know that V of T is equal to L di by dt, right? So we substitute that in the power equation. Now we know that the inner work or energy is the integral of the power right integral of the power is the work so from t naught to t we integrate the power equation and we substitute the value of the power that we have got in the previous equation so li di by dt now dt dt cancel out each other and the differential is in terms of the current so we integrate the current from 0 uh, to i of t then we get the energy is equal to half Li square. If you remember what the energy we got for a capacitor, that is half Cb square. This is the energy we got for capacitor. This is the energy which we got for inductor. So both you can see there is a direct relationship. The inductance has become the capacitance. The current has become the voltage. So this is the energy for the inductor and the capacitor, stored energy. This represent that energy stored in the inductance is returned to the circuit if the current changes back to zero. So there will be a continuous flow to and forth for the current, movement of the current. So movement of the current will be there, obviously there will be movement of the energy. So energy that is stored is returned back to the circuit. Now we'll discuss the inductance in series and parallel similar to the capacitance. However, derivation we will do uh, similarly to the capacitance. So we have taken an example where three inductors are there which are in series. So we have a series inductance. So there is a potential V which is applied in the circuit or the, then there will be voltage distribution V1, V2 and V3 through the inductor L1, L2 and L3 for the current I, the passive sign convention the current entering is positive and current leaving is negative. That for each inductor we have done it. Okay. And we know the derivation that we can do. The potential V is equal to source voltage V1 plus V2 plus V3. And voltage we know that it is equal to L di by dt. So if we substitute V1, V2, V3 in terms of the fundamental equation of the voltage and then we equate it we will get that the equivalent inductance L equivalent is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3. So sum of all the inductors which are connected to a circuit will be giving you the value of L equivalent when a potential V is applied and the current flowing is I. So this is about the series inductance. Let us take the parallel inductance. So you have L1, L2 and L3 all are connected in parallel. It means if the supply voltage is V, the V will remain constant for all the inductors because it is in parallel. The supply current I will be distributed uh, in the parallel circuit I1, I2 and I3. Then we can write the source current I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 in accordance with the KCL. And we note the equation of the current is equal to 1 by L integral V dt. So we can put that in the current equation and determine similar what we have done for the capacitor. Then the parallel inductance we will be getting L equivalent is equal to 1 by 
the reciprocal of 1 by L1 plus 1 by L2 plus 1 by L3. So this is the series inductance and this is the parallel inductance for n number of inductance. Now what do we notice? We notice that the inductances are combined in exactly the same way as the resistance. So if we take this as resistance R equivalent for a series network, we know that it is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on. For the resistances in parallel, we know that 1 by R equivalent is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 and so on. So inductance and the resistances uh, connection in terms of the series or the parallel circuit it will be the same. Now there is something called known as the parasitic effect for the real inductor. So when we draw this inductor L for the voltage V of T and for the current I, this is the circuit that we have drawn. So this is a real inductor. So real inductor means there is no loss in the inductor and it is an ideal inductor. Sorry, uh, this is an ideal inductor. Real. This is an ideal inductor. Ideal inductor is the one which is having no losses. Okay, Energy will be stored and uh, sent back forth. However, there will be no losses. Now we will discuss the real inductor which is having a parasitic effect. So that we are going to discuss. Now here you have a ideal inductor which is not having any losses. And if you have the real inductor which is having a losses, then you will have other two parameters. One is the resistance RP which is in parallel and another is a capacitance CP in parallel to the inductance for the desired inductance. This is the, uh, the, the inductor this one is basically idle. Now what is this resistance RS we are going to discuss. So this circuit when we have this this is the part of the real inductor. So when we draw the real inductor we have to draw like this with a resistance in parallel and capacitance in parallel with the idle inductor. Now the series resistance here RS, what does it represent? It represents the resistivity of the material composing the wire. So every uh, wire which is made up of a material will be having a power loss, right? So uh, and it will oppose the current. So that property of the resistance is represented as RS for the material. The parallel capacitance, if you see here CP, what does it represent? It is associated with the electric field in the dielectric insulation. So last class when we have discussed, you remember that we have two plates and between that there is a dielectric. This is represented with a capacitance C, right? So the Parallel capacitance which is for the inductor is associated with the electric field in the dielectric or insulation between the coils of the wire. It is called interwinding capacitance. This is known as interwinding capacitance. The resistances RP uh, represent the core loss due to the AD current in the core. So what is AD current? I hope you know uh, when there is a core and there is the inductor is there then what happened is that if you apply a potential V uh, time varying quantity then the current is also time varying. Now the flux which is established in the core is also time varying. Now due to the establishment of the flux you know that wherever there is a current there is a flux and vice versa. So these flux will also result in a current. This current will be there in the core and these core the current will be flowing in the circulating manner like this. So the current will be flowing in the circulating manner in the core. This current will lead to a loss which is known as AD current losses. So the circulating current that is there in the core due to the flux established which will indirectly give the current and the loss is known as the AD current loss. So the resistance RP represent the core loss which is there in the core. So this part of the circuit together forms to be a real inductor. But in day-to-day um, -day life when we talk about electrical circuit, we study electric circuit, we only take this idle inductor for solving the problem. Now we'll discuss some important properties of an inductor.
the voltage across an inductor is zero when the current is constant you remember when we discussed the capacitor the current through a capacitor is zero when the voltage is constant the same statement we have modified here the voltage across an inductor is zero when the current is constant why voltage is equal to l di by dt now if the current is dc or constant then di by dt will be equal to zero so the potential or voltage will be equal to zero this means that inductor will act as a short circuit to dc the same statement if you write for a capacitor the capacitor will act as a open circuit to dc right the same sentence we have written now the current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously same sentence for a capacitor the voltage through a capacitor cannot change instantly instantaneously okay so uh, what you have to remember that uh, the capacitor which is there in the electric field and the inductor which is there in the magnetic field both of its properties are same only the governing uh, quantity that is the current or a voltage is changing so if you remember one the other one you can easily find out now the ideal capacitor what is an ideal capacitor which is do not dissipate energy there is no loss r equal to zero there is no loss in the capacitor the energy stored in it can be retrieved at a later time and the inductor takes power from the circuit store energy and then deliver the power to the circuit when returning previously stored energy so energy will flow to and fro back without dissipating any amount of energy so resistance will be zero for the ideal inductor uh, i believe that here it will be inductor okay uh, oh just like ideal capacitor we have written it so a practical non ideal inductor has a parasitic effect causing losses so you have seen that there is a inductor which is ideal then you have a resistor rp and then you have a capacitor cp so this is non ideal real or practical inductor it will have some amount of losses but the ideal inductor do not dissipate energy and there is no losses now this is the final uh, topic that uh, for the comparison between the resistor capacitor and inductor so all are passive elements and these are the basic elements important characteristic we are going to discuss first the voltage current characteristic so v equal to ir you know in accordance with the ohms law so v equal to ir here it is a linear relationship you can see the relationship is linear so voltage and current will be in phase with each other whereas in capacitor the voltage is 1 by c integral of i dt with a some initial voltage v t not so there is a differential term occurring here then this is not linear and for a inductor the voltage is l di by dt current voltage relationship we can get from the voltage current relationship the current is v by r i is equal to c dv by dt the integral has become the differential here and the differential has become the integral here for the current so this is the current voltage relationship now talking about the power or the energy whatever it is so we can say the power is equal to i square r so this is non linear in terms of the current is equal to v square by r here the energy is equal to half cv square here the energy is equal to half li square capacitor depends upon the voltage inductor depends upon the current series connected and parallel connection now these we have to remember the r equivalent first we remember for the series a connection for the resistor if two resistors are in series then you can add up r1 plus r2 similarly the resistance in series for the resistors will be equivalent to the capacitor so r1 plus r2 here it will be l1 plus l2 this will be easy way to remember the parallel connection is r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 however if the resistors are more you have to just divide it r equivalent is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus dot 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 this is only for two resistors in parallel not for more so inductance will again be the same as that of the resistance 
However, the capacitance will be opposite to the resistance. So this will be in the parallel form and this will be in the series form. So you can remember that inductance and resistance are behaving similarly and capacitance in uh, differently. Okay, what happened for the DC case? For the DC case, the condition remain the same or the register do not change whether it is an AC or a DC, but capacitor behave as an open circuit. Why open circuit? You, have, you can see that dV by dt will be zero, so current will be zero, then it is an open circuit. And here it will be short circuit. Now why it is short circuit? Because from this equation you can find that current constant dI by dt will be constant and voltage will be zero. So that will lead to a short circuit condition. So what are the variables that do not change abruptly? So it is not applicable for register. However, the voltage do not change for abruptly for a capacitor and current do not change for the inductor. So these uh, formulas has been in accordance with this passive sign convention, which is that the positive will be current entering and negative will be current leaving. So this is the passive sign convention that we have used. So this complete our discussion on inductor. So inductors and capacitors both are closely related to each other in terms of the magnetic and electric field and all derivations, whether in terms of the current, voltage, power, energy, series connection parallel combinations we have to read throughout together in order to understand both uh, simultaneously.